Hi everyone, I'm Adam Harriton, and in this video I'd like to share with you some clips from a program that I recently attended. It was the Advanced Tree Measuring Workshop at Cook Forest State Park in Pennsylvania. Now if you've never heard of Cook Forest or if you've never been to the area, it's one of the last remaining stands of old growth trees in the entire United States. It's truly a remarkable place, it's one of my favorite places to be in the entire world, and I try to get out there as much as I possibly can. Now what a fitting place to have a tree measuring workshop because it has some pretty tall trees including an eastern white pine that was measured at about 184 feet and as of 2012 it was considered the fifth tallest tree in the entire eastern United States. There are also several massive hemlock trees including one that's about 147 and a half feet. In this video you'll be hearing from Robert Leverett. Robert is the executive director of the Eastern Native Tree Society. And you'll also see clips from Dale Luthringer, who's the environmental education specialist at Cook Forest. Both of these guys are tree experts. They really know what they're talking about. And they're the ones that led this program. So not only will they be discussing tree height, tree circumference, and how to measure crown spread, but you also see towards the end of the video, Dale discussing why a particular part of the forest, known as the Forest Cathedral, is so special. Thanks so much for tuning in, really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy these clips from the Advanced Tree Measuring Workshop at Cook Forest. What we're going to cover in this particular PowerPoint presentation, we're going to cover the definition of tree height. We all have an idea of what that means, but we have to give absolutely concrete definition. Everybody's on the same page. Then, how are we going to measure height? What are the different methods? Bear in mind, because I'll often come back and say from a cadre's member's point of view, the cadre member has to be able to explain a measuring method to anybody, to everybody. So whether you use them or not, you have to know all of them. Sources of measurement error. This is a big specialty of mine. This is where the rubber meets the road. Why do I reject the tangent, the, the historical, uh, traditional tangent method for almost all purposes? We'll get into that here. But where would I also, I use the tangent method quite comfortably. And then other sources of information. This is the only signpost on this side of the road. All the other trays we're going to be looking at are going to be on the other side of the road. But if you look, you've got a signpost here that says number one. And so if you look in the direction, there's a number one posted at the base of that pine tree. So that's the tree that we're going to measure. When you go to measure it, we're going to have you stand in this general area. Everybody shoot at the top of the tree, and we should be in yards, okay? Or an equivalent, trying to, if you're in meters, you want to try and get off meters. Okay. And see what we're getting for distance. It's hard to measure on windy days, so you try and get it in the middle, or you wait for the wind to stop, and you're trying to want to hit it at its most stationary point. That's going to give you your most accurate measure. He's also giving you the rules to have a cheat. <laughs> normally what we're going to do when you're back in the field, we don't take the, normally don't take the time to get an exact mid-slope on every single tree when we're out here measuring hundreds of them. But when you get into a sloping condition, and if you're out there going to be certifying for American Forest, uh, you're going to need to back up all your measurements, and sometimes these trees aren't as cherry as this is, okay? <laughs> if this is back in the woods, well, I would, I would, I would stand it generally in this angle. You can see it's got somewhat of a slope. You're going to want to stand generally in the middle. This is where, if you can see, this is to me generally where I would think mid-slope would be. All right, maybe down here at this point, but somewhere in here is probably where mid-slope is going to be. I did this kind of thing in Moak Trail State Forest to help with uh, with, with a plot with mm -hmm. VCR and I had mm -hmm. yellow pins yeah, sure. it was in a camp, not it was close to a campground area and, and I think some children found them and said, oh, how lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and they collected them. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Something like 120 pins. Oh. <laughs> Oftentimes you follow the trunk and it's a straight line down into the duff. Well, you know the tree has, the normal form is the tree is going to have a root flare when you get to the root collar. If you're on the high side, for whatever reason, and you're still in straight trunk, you know the trunk got buried. Then you go around to the other side, if it's on a slope now I'm talking about, and there the duff tends to wash away. So you get this root spread, and you've got to be careful that you don't go and you're down measuring from some lower point where you're actually in the roots. Uh, enjoy what you're seeing back here. majority of our conifers are going to be hemlock. 
Our white pine are much taller than that, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, but in terms of white pine for the hemlock, this is the best place to go to see uh, sheer numbers of tall hemlock or white pine in one place. Uh, Mohawk Trail State Forest is right up there. Uh, Claremont's a private estate up north in New Hampshire. Another great place, but um, other than that, besides Hearts Content, uh, most of these sites, if you find a site with 150 foot pines, you're lucky, you're lucky to find more than a couple. Uh, so they're, they're very hard to find. But here at Cook, they're, I'll say they're everywhere, but it's not that difficult to find 140 footers. They're, they're all over. Old trees growing in a row is a type of an old growth forest character that we look for. Let us know one of the signs that we're likely in an old growth forest. Uh, usually that's what we're, we do most of our hikes up here. We're trying to get people to get a picture of what an old forest looks like because most of the state of Pennsylvania has probably been timbered in at least the last hundred years, maybe 125. So to find a place that has never been timbered or let's say very lightly managed is very difficult to find and Cook Forest is really, in my opinion, is the best old growth forest that we have in the state. We go up the path here probably about another 60 yards or so. We got a pine that we want you to take a look at and uh, we'll see if we can See if you can apply some of what you learned today in a real world situation. Okay. This one in 97, we cored this to uh, about 327 rings. And we did that on the down on the on the opposite slope on the opposite slope there. So 327 plus however long 97 is. My brain's almost lost almost, with math. So add about another 18 or so years onto that. Okay. And it's at least that old. So you're looking at around 340 years. Plus, however long it took to probably grow four or five feet, which probably wasn't a whole lot, because you get back in the mid 1600s when a lot of these pines first started to grow was right after a large scale fire that came through this area. So that fire killed a lot of the top canopy trees, but it didn't kill them all. This pine is pretty darn close to the average girth and the average height of a lot of pines that we find here in the park. And uh, so what I'd like you to do with your newfound skills is to see if you can measure it. Okay. This one? Yes. So the first thing you need to do is you need to find where, you need to see the top of the tree. And from down here, I can't see it. <laughs> I don't suggest going downhill. Stay on the path or uphill. And eventually you're going to find a spot or somebody is going to find a spot that you can cheat and use that you can see the top of the tree or at least to most of the top of the tree. So that's the first thing you need to do when you get into the world, real world situation is to position yourself where one, you can see the top, and then two, hopefully your laser can see through this secondary canopy up here. So that's the hardest thing, I think, to overcome when you use this method, but it's still better than tangent. Because if you look at this tree, this tree is going out, it's not straight up, it goes out and it slopes out over this hilltop. And if we were to drop a plumb bulb off this tree from this bait from the top and measure it out to the base, you're probably looking into the teens to low 20 feet from where the crown offsets from the base. So it'd be a, a very uh, interesting tree. We've uh, done a lot where we've compared sine to tangent uh, and seen what the differences are going to be. And uh, they're it's quite considerable in places. So.